I got a rager going on over there right now. Hey everybody, Kyle here with Spicer Designs. Yeah! Oh yeah, time to play. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Welcome back to the channel. And we're going down. So smooth. Now for the tricky part. Ow, damn it. Oh, 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 damn it! That's why they put a red cap on that. All right, we got the new Kimron XH26D pulled into the shop so we don't have to listen to all that road noise. That was rude. I actually called the state to see if they would shut down that road so I could do this video, but it's technically a highway and a hospital route, so they wouldn't do it. Personally, I think that's kind of a horse excuse, but who am I? Anyways, we got some new subscribers on the channel from the video where I went and picked up this new Kimron. So thank you for subscribing. I hope you enjoy the content we have here. We have quite the variety on the channel, but I'm going to have a lot of content using this new mini excavator. So today's video, we're gonna go over three things. I'm gonna give you a brief overview slash walk around of the new mini excavator. We're gonna talk about some of the main specs, all of its functions and features, all that good information for anyone that may be in the market for a machine like this. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you know how I feel about a good machine. 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 I freaking love them. All right, enough screwing around. The second thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this thing out on the property and we're gonna do some testing with it. I'm gonna show you uh, how it digs. I got a couple of small saplings that I wanna dig up. They're kind of dead. And then I have a bigger dead tree that I wanna try to shove over with this thing. And the third thing we're gonna talk about, we're gonna bring it back into the shop after we do some testing. And I'm gonna share with you some things that I've noticed on this that I'm not a huge fan of, but they're all things that I can fix. As most of you know, I have a CNC plasma table. I do some metal fabricating on the channel. So we're gonna be doing a lot of work with the CNC and the fabricating in order to do some upgrades to this Kimron excavator. And that won't just apply to the Kimron brand, that will apply to other Chinese excavators as well. Fly, damn it! I opened the door for 20 minutes and like 87 flies came in the shop. And I've already killed, I think 31. Okay, first and foremost, this is the Kimron XH26D. This is a 5,500 pound machine. It has a Yanmar diesel with all the USA EPA regulations. Now the actual model number on the Yanmar diesel motor in this thing is a 3TNV80F-SNSY. All the information that I found actually shows that this motor is anywhere from 19.6 horsepower to 20.4 horsepower. The nameplate on this excavator shows it being a 26 horsepower. I believe that that is actually incorrect. I'm guessing they're going off the 26 right here, which usually indicates the weight or the tonnage of the machine, a 2.6 ton machine. Now don't quote me on that. That's just from the research that I had found. The best person to talk to is probably Ron over at K&R Equipment. Now, if you are interested in one of these Kimrons, you can get more information on microtraco.com. Ron over at K&R Equipment sells these machines. These are his brand and they are located in Muskogee, Oklahoma. That is where I drove to pick this thing up, which was about a 10 hour drive for me down here in Southern Indiana. And what I like about their website is they don't hide the pricing. They have all their pricing, all their options right there on the website so you know exactly what you're getting into. And the price on this particular machine with the options that I have, of course the thumb is standard. It's got the extendable tracks and the hydraulic quick coupler, which is a feature I really like, brings a grand total to $32,900 for this machine with these options. Now for a comparable name brand machine, you're looking at almost twice the price for something like this at around 6,000 pounds, probably gonna be somewhere between 50 to $60,000. So for my situation, this was a great option. Now Kimron does a really good job of upgrading their Chinese machines. They actually provide them with certain specifications and requirements that they like to maybe beef them up a little bit, more standard options, they give the better hydraulic pumps, the better diesel motor in them. So you are getting a better quality machine than you would be if you just ordered them straight from China and had them shipped over. 
All right, now let's get into some of the dimensions on this XH26D, starting at the bottom. So the tracks are a 10 inch track. Now my tracks are fully extended right now to the max width and we are right at 59 to 60 inches. And when they are retracted, you're looking somewhere around 51, 52 inches wide. The length of the track is right at six foot. Now another dimension that's important to a lot of people is the height. So they know if they can get it into their garage or not. The height on this machine, right around seven foot four to seven foot five inches. So yes, it will definitely fit into an eight foot garage door. Now this particular machine has a max digging depth of eight feet. It has a max digging height of 12 foot nine inches. It has a max digging radius of 13 feet, two inches. And it has a max dumping height of nine foot, six inches. And I am five foot, 10 inches. Five foot 11 with my boots on, you know, just average. I could bend it if I wanted to. Now, let's open up the f***ing access panels, see how it's all laid out. Everything has a key on it, a different key, not the same key. So no one steals your hydraulic tank, or your battery, I don't know why they would. So these are our two access panels. This access panel right here has our hydraulic fluid, very accessible. It's got a little viewing window right here so you can look at your fluid level. And you've got your battery, very accessible also and your diesel fill right here. Everything, very accessible. All right, now for the engine compartment. You can see we've got our water separator and a fuel shutoff right there. We've got our oil fill right up here in the front, very easy to get to. And our dipstick is that little yellow round ring right there. We've got our radiator and cooling fan over on this right side. Pretty easy to get to, to clean the fins and blow it out. We've got our air filter also right out here in front. Our coolant fill, again, very accessible. We've got our fuel filter right here. And right down there by the oil fill is the oil filter. It's kind of hard to see. It's more accessible from underneath than it is from right through there. And we've got our hydraulic pump, our exhaust. Everything that you need to access is right up here, easy to get to. So I do like that. And then this panel on the left side where you would enter the machine, it does not open, but it's got three big Phillips screws on it. You could pop them out real quick and you could access your hydraulic pump and valving. All right, now let's talk about operating this machine. Now I will say that the operator station was probably designed more for a small Chinese boy. No offense to any Chinese boys out there. It's just a little tight. Like I mentioned, I am 5'10", 175 pounds, and it fits me pretty well, so I'm good. Beefy. All right, a very important question that I had when I bought this machine was what type of controls does it have? Now, there are two types of controls, the ISO controls and the SAE controls. Now the Kimron machines are ISO controls. So left to right on your left control is going to be your house where you could turn the entire cab and left to right on your right control is going to be your bucket curl. Those are the same on both sets of controls. The only thing that's different is your main boom and your stick. With the ISO controls, your stick is going to be forward and backwards on your left joystick, and your main boom is going to be forward and backwards on your right joystick. And then for the SAE controls, it's going to be flip-flop. Main boom on your left, and your stick on your right. You can also call them excavator controls, cat controls, backhoe controls, John Deere controls. There's all kinds of names, but the technical names are the ISO and the SAE. Then of course we have our tracks, kind of like a zero turn, very easy. Now there are no foot pedals on these, it's only hand controls. And then down here on the left side by your left foot, you have a foot pedal. And when you press on that, this Kimron machine is actually a two speed. So when you press on that foot lever, it'll speed it up. And then over on the right side, you have another foot control. And when you press that foot control forward, that is going to close your thumb. And when you rock it backwards, it's going to open your thumb, almost like a treadle pedal on a Kubota, which I can't stand. And then you also can rotate the foot pedal to the left and the right. So if you push that thing to the left, your boom is gonna to swing to the left. If you push it to the right, your boom is going to swing to the right. And while doing that, it will keep the cab in the same position, which works well if you're working up against a wall or a house or something like that. You can get right up to it and dig right alongside of it. 
Then over here on the right side in the operator station, we have our light that's on our boom to see where we're digging. Then we have our throttle right here. If you press it forward, that's the lower RPMs, and you push it backwards, that's higher RPMs. Then you have this lever right here. This is for our blade. Press it forward to push it down, pull it back to lift the blade. You also have a nice little display right here which gives you your fuel level, gives you your um, engine heat, and some other things. Shows you if you're in a higher speed, it's got a check engine light. Also over here on the right side, you have a switch that you flip to engage your quick coupler. So when you press that button, there is a small little hydraulic cylinder in there that is going to open up and release that bucket. You can then go ahead and drop that bucket, move over to your other bucket that you're gonna be using, and you can go ahead and hook that one, flip the switch again, and that hydraulic cylinder will close and lock that in place. It's a really nice feature, I love it. I've actually used it quite a few times already. Then the last thing is going to be your extendable tracks. Now in order to use your extendable tracks, the first thing that you need to do is lower your front blade and get the excavator elevated up in the air. It could be just a couple inches. Then you're gonna to wanna to rotate your house all the way around 180 degrees, plant your boom and stick into the ground, and you're gonna to wanna to raise the other side. Basically the idea is to get the tracks completely off the ground. You don't wanna have any extra resistance when you're extending or retracting those tracks. Once you get the excavator elevated, you're gonna go ahead and lift on this lever right here. That will switch the hydraulics to where your blade control will now extend your tracks or retract them. Once you get them to the desired position, then you would go ahead and take this lever, push it back down, and then that will divert the hydraulics back to your front blade. So this lever right here will control your front blade again. Now along with sucking your tracks in, doesn't do you much good if the blade is still at the full width. So what they've done is they've got a couple of four inch clips right here on the end. You can actually pull a pin and you can rotate them around the back, put the pin back in. So the blade will give you that narrower width to match the track width. Well, that's pretty much gonna cover it as far as overall dimensions and the main specs on this machine. If there's something that I missed, feel free to ask me in the comments. You could email me. But overall, this Kimron, it's beefy. And I like beefy. The last thing I'll mention is this machine comes with a 17 inch bucket. It actually shows it being an 18 inch bucket on the website, but I'm guessing maybe 18 inches of standard size, but it actually measures out to 17. And again, it's beefy. All right, I think I've done enough talking. I know that that can get a little bit boring, but I do wanna provide you guys with the information in case you are interested in this machine, which is very likely why you're even watching this video. So let's get this thing outside now. We're gonna dig up a couple of trees, then we'll bring it back in here, talk about some upgrades that I'm gonna be doing to this thing, and I have a little bonus challenge at the end that we're gonna be doing with the Keystone Girl. <laughs> <laughs> it's gotta believe in yourself. Giddy up. All right, here we are, it's a little windy out. I got my little fuzz tickler on my mic, so hopefully that helps. Got these three little fruit trees. They're not doing very well, and they just look like shit. So I'm gonna try to make quick work of these things with the mini excavator, grab them all with a thumb, and I'm gonna transplant them into the fire pit. All right, I've got my 10 inch trenching bucket on here, and I am at the lowest RPM. This machine is new to me. I am not an expert on an excavator. So uh, don't beat me up too bad. I'm not awful. I'm gonna just try to shove this thing over first. It's definitely got the power. I was trying to. I'm gonna go ahead and just chip away at the roots a little bit. I don't want to make a big mess here. It's probably gonna be all it takes. I right, grab it with the thumb. See if we can just yank that out of there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like nothing. Well, that was easy. I mean, it's only a three inch fruit tree.
think that's a sucker right out of the ground. Yeah, buddy. Didn't even have to bust out the chainsaw. Try not to fall, try not to fall. Nailed it. Now the best part, we're gonna use that thumb, we're gonna grab all three trees, we're gonna transplant them into the fire pit. All right, since those three fruit trees were a little anticlimactic, probably not the best word to use for that, kind of sexual, oh well. Now we're gonna try taking down this dead tree. Now this one's about 10 inches in diameter. It is dead, so that root system's not as strong. But I gotta dig my way in there a little bit, and I'm gonna push it out this way into the yard because it's kind of leaning over here. It's probably the safest way to do it. And then I can just drag it right into the fire pit and be done with it. thinking I need a ripper tooth. I plan on fabricating one on the CNC plasma table. Ooh, that's a son of a bitch right there. Forgot to mention I waxed it. That's my skin right there. All right, now real quick, we're getting toward the end of this video. I do wanna go over a couple of things that I'm not a huge fan of and how I'm going to fix it and then some other upgrades on top of that that I'm going to be making to this mini excavator. All right, the first one is with the thumb. You can see it's got a couple of pieces of round pipe in between for some bracing, but there's quite a bit of material hanging out here that's kind of vulnerable to getting bent. And in fact, I actually did bend this one already, which you can see right there, it's bent about a half an inch right at the tip there. This one still straight, but what I wanna do is add some flat stock webbing inside here, some flat plate, and I'll be using the Langmuir CNC plasma table to cut that out and I'm gonna weld it in there. But I can't get too close to the end here because the ends of the thumb right here actually come up and go past the boom. They kind of slide over it a little bit, kind of fits in there. So I think I can go somewhere around this second tooth right here, which will give me quite a bit more stability there, a little bit more strength. All right, the second thing, which is gonna be coming up here in a video in the next week or two, I ordered some parts for it already, is this 
kind of a cluster of hoses here. The quick coupler hoses are a separate line ran. They're kind of just tie wrapped along some of the hard pipe. I'm going to reroute them, make it look a little cleaner. And I got a different valve. This is actually just like a shut off for the thumb. I got a three way diverter valve coming so I can have a quick coupler on it. So I can go ahead and hook up my tilt bucket without disconnecting any other hydraulic lines. And along with that, I'm gonna have some of these hydraulic hoses shortened. Just kind of clean them up, tighten them up next to the stick here. Like you could see when I was just digging up the roots on that tree, these hoses get in the way and it wouldn't take much for one of them to get snagged, ripped out and have hydraulic fluid blown everywhere and now you're dead in the water. The next thing I wanna point out, if you do decide to go with a Kimron or another like branded Chinese machine, if you add the quick coupler, it actually extends the length of that stick a little bit and by doing so, your bucket, the teeth on it, can actually come into contact with your main boom cylinder here. So if you do have the quick coupler, be very careful when you're pulling that stick in close to the boom and curling your bucket at the same time, because you can hit that cylinder. It's not really a big deal, just something you gotta get used to and be aware of, that's all. All right, the next thing is the foot pedal. So if you close it up like this, it kinda locks it in place, and you open it up and it rotates all around for different functions. I'm not a huge fan of the foot pedal. My boot doesn't fit in between these and it's just kind of an awkward tight spot. So I'm currently in the process of doing some research. I'm actually going to be replacing these joysticks with a new joystick that actually has a variable thumb control on it. Now I already ordered them. I have them sitting on my workbench. I'm just trying to do a little bit more research to see what kind of spool valves I need and solenoids and all the components that I need to complete that process. So what'll happen is on the right joystick thumb control, that will now control the thumb. And on the left joystick, the thumb control will control the side swing on the boom. Now I personally think that's gonna be a killer upgrade to this machine. I haven't seen it done yet, not saying that no one's done it, but hopefully when I get that project done, if any of you guys have a Chinese machine or you have the foot controls, maybe that will help you convert yours as well. Now the last upgrade I'm thinking about doing is on the roll cage. Now you can see right here there's a bend, then it comes up straight, and there's another bend. Now like I mentioned, it is a little tight, so when you get in and out of this thing, you kind of have to contort your body over to the right and get in here. It's a little bit of a tight squeeze. So what I'm thinking about doing, the top part of this roll cage actually clamps on right here and right here so the whole top half will come off. I'm guessing they do that for shipping. What I'd like to do is rebuild the whole top section of this. I want to make the top canopy a little bit bigger so you get a little bit more shade and I want to remove this bend right here so it comes straight up instead. That way the boom will not hit it and it'll get me about another four or five inches of clearance for my shoulder as I'm getting in and out of the machine. Now the roll cage upgrade, that's gonna be a little bit down the road. It's really not a priority. I can get in and out of the machine just fine, but it's something that I do wanna to do to it eventually. That's it, that's it. Now I already know, because I've already gotten comments about this, it is a Chinese machine. It's from China. That is the point. I cannot afford a brand name machine. This excavator is not made by Kimron. It is made in China. Kimron specs out certain things, certain options, upgrades to different parts. You can easily find this exact machine on some other website that they rebrand somewhere else, but it's not identical. There are upgrades, there are other things that Kimron does do to make them a little bit better. They also have parts available. So if you choose to go with a Chinese machine, that is the trade-off. You're saving money, you're not getting a name brand, you're not having a service dealer very close by where you can have them come pick it up or you can haul it over. You're gonna be expected to probably be able to do some work and some maintenance on your own, which is exactly what I intend on doing. And that's why this is such a good fit for homeowners without a huge expense. Well, what were you giving it to me for? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, am I walking in? All right, now for that bonus challenge I promised you with the Keystone girl. Come on in here. She is looking mighty fine in green. Very nice shade. Thanks. And you got a cold Keystone for me. Always do. You took my advice. You're showing a little bit more. Uh, <laughs> I listen. Of your personality. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're gonna do just kind of a, a goofy little challenge here. No one needs to do it. If you want to try it on your own, go ahead. If you want to videotape it, I don't really give a what you do. The point of this challenge is gonna to be to show you how smooth this little Chinese machine actually is. Keep in mind, I am still a beginner on excavators, so I'm not the greatest example, but I think I can do it. 
<laughs> it's got to believe in yourself. As far in as the boom will go, as far in as the stick will go, and I got the bucket nice and level, and then I'm going to have the keystone girl. Wait, first, I got to crack it open. You don't open it, it just defeats the whole purpose. And then I got to taste test it. Good. Pretty good. I hope I don't waste it. No. I'll set it right there on the bucket. Good. So it's right on the edge of the bucket. I'm gonna to try to fully extend the boom, the stick, and curl the bucket at the same time all in one smooth motion and set it right down on the concrete at that furthest point. All right, here we go. One smooth motion without spilling. from fumes. Can I put it in my uh on oh, your holder? cup holder? Yeah. There we go. Yeah. I like to try to drink it right <laughs> out of the holder. Alright well that's a fun little challenge. I know it's not um, all that difficult. The hydraulics on this machine actually are pretty damn smooth. So anyways I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any other questions on this Kimron Chinese excavator feel free to ask me in the comments and if I don't have the answer I will get it from Ron the owner. Please hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. There's gonna be a ton of more content using this excavator around the property. I've got all kinds of projects lined up. Anyways, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Yeah. Miss. <laughs> oh, those got oh, hard. Kind of a hand mark. <laughs> okay, that's enough. <laughs> Jeez. I'm gonna have the Keystone Girl uh, show us what buckets we got here. What, what kind of buckets are these? This is a hook bucket, you okay. know, and you attach it to your excavator and you just dig. You know what? I don't think I got the buckets in the picture. Oh well, they get the point. What the f was that? Damn floors! Okay, now that I got that out of my system.